Hello, fifth graders. Welcome to lesson 2.1. Place the first digit. Please pause to write the lesson number and title in your notebook. Today's lesson objective is to place the first digit in the quotient by estimating or using place value. Please pause again to write the objective in your notebook. All right, fifth graders, today's lesson is on division. We've practiced division in fourth grade, so let's go ahead and jump in by reading our Unlock the Problem. It says, Tina has eight purple daisies. In all, she counts 128 petals on her flowers. If each flower has the same number of petals, how many petals are on one flower? As always, let's begin by figuring out what we're looking for. So the first thing in the blue box says underline the sentence that tells you what we're trying to find. That usually comes at the end of a word problem. So at the end it says, how many petals are on one flower? The next thing says circle any numbers you're going to use. Why well, see that she has eight daisies and that each daisy has 128. And then it asks us how are we going to use these numbers to solve the problem? Well, in this case, it says each flower has the same. So I know that I'm going to share, which means I'm going to divide. Now that we know what we're gonna do with these numbers, let's go ahead and begin our problem. Step one, use an estimate to place the first digit in the quotient. A quotient is our answer to a division problem. So by estimating, we can figure out about how much our answer should be. So we have the number 128, and we're going to round 128 to 160. Now that might seem like a big jump, but we did it for a reason. Remember that when we divide, we have to pick numbers that are easily divisible. 128 isn't easily divisible by eight, but 160 is because eight goes into 16 easily. So we're gonna round 128 to 160. We're still gonna divide by eight, so we only rounded our dividend, not our divisor. And now we can have a simple estimate. Eight goes into 16 two times with one zero and 160, so we have one zero on the end. So we know that each flower is going to be about 20 petals, and we know that the first digit in our quotient will be around two which means it could be a three, it could be a one, but we know it's not going to be a 10 or a nine because our quotient, our estimate, started with a two. So let's go ahead and divide and see if we're close. Step one in dividing is to divide the largest number all the way to the left first. So we want to divide into the one, but we know that eight doesn't go into one, so we skip the one and we go to the next biggest number that we can go into, which is 12. So we divide 12 by eight. Well, eight can go into 12 one time, which is eight, and then we subtract. So 12 minus eight is four. And then we check and make sure, does four go into 12 anymore? Does eight go into 12 anymore? Nope, so we know we're good, it's time to move on. On our next step, we've already filled in what we had before. We have the four that we had left over, and now we're gonna bring down the eight from up above. So we're left with 48. So how many times now does eight go into 48? Well, I know that eight times six is 48. So my six goes on top, and 48 goes underneath, and I subtract. 48 minus 48 is zero, so I have no remainder. 48 went in six times. There is no leftovers and nothing to bring down, so that must be my answer. So my answer is at the top. Remember when we have a quotient of division, our answer is at the top. So my answer is 16. And if we look back to the top to our estimate, our estimate was that it was gonna be about 20, and 16 is pretty close to about 20. Great job remembering division, fifth graders. Let's continue on. 
Today's lesson activity has you find the quotient, which is the answer to a division problem, for two different problems. Number one is 627 divided by 3. Remember that the big number goes inside the house, so 627 goes inside, and the 3 goes on the outside. And then the second one is 712 divided by 3. Eight. Again, the big number goes on the inside. Remember to follow the steps that we learned last year as well as the steps we went over in this lesson. We always go into the number that we see to the left first. So three is going to go into the six. Three goes into six two times, which is six. Then we subtract and there's no remainder. We bring down the next number. Remember these steps to solve these problems in your math notebook. I look forward to seeing you at the teacher table. Great job.